On today's Smart 7, blinking heads to Israel, a crackdown on kids vaping is coming and lots more. It's Friday the 13th of October, it's World Egg Day and happy birthday Sasha Baron Cohen. The debt toll rose again on Thursday after the terrorist attacks in Israel over the weekend and the Israeli response in Gaza. At least 13 Israelis died during the Hamas attack and over 1,500 Palestinians have since been killed by Israeli airstrikes. Residents of Gaza are running out of food and water and while over 400,000 have already fled their homes according to the UN, now the Israeli Defence Forces have warned over 1 million residents they need to move to the south of Gaza. Israeli Prime Minister and the head of the new unity government, Benjamin Netanyahu, hosted a press conference with American Secretary of State Anthony Blinken on Thursday. Netanyahu warned of many difficult days ahead. This is a time, a particular time, that we must stand tall, proud and united against evil. Thank you, America, for standing with Israel today, tomorrow. And always. Among his remarks, Blinken addressed the persistent false claim that the $6 billion released by the US to Iran had been used to fund these attacks. The US and Qatar have now frozen Iran's access to those funds, which remain closely supervised. The Secretary of State also reiterated America's unwavering support for Israel against all enemies. To any adversary, state or non-state, thinking of taking advantage of the current crisis to attack Israel, don't. The United States has Israel's back. The Royal Navy has deployed two ships to the eastern Mediterranean to support Israel and assist in stabilising the region. The British government has also begun repatriation flights from Israel for those stranded there, with the first flight from Tel Aviv taking off on Thursday night. Thursday also saw a press conference hosted by British Israelis whose parents have been taken hostage and are being held in Gaza. Over 100 people have been taken and at least 17 British citizens are dead or unaccounted for. Dr Sharon Shochad of Defend Israeli Democracy organised the press conference. We have never before in Israel experienced such a brutal, horrendous and traumatic event, which will take years, if not generations, to overcome. Russia has been noticeably quiet in its response to events. They don't recognise Hamas as a terrorist organisation and Moscow offered no message of condolences to Israel. Vladimir Putin finally broke his silence on Thursday to make an offer to get involved in moderating peace talks. Well, why not? We've had very stable business relations with Israel and we have very friendly relations with Palestine for decades. Our friends know about this and Russia, in my opinion, could also make a contribution to the peace process. One of the few things that didn't get cancelled at the Tory party conference was the government's plan to crack down on smoking and on vaping by children. There's an eight-week consultation process going on at the moment with the intention that legislation will follow. It's part of a plan to limit smoking overall, with the smoking age rising by a year every year until eventually cigarettes are fully banned. But the worry is that children are being targeted by vaping companies with brightly coloured disposable vapes and sweet flavours. There's also been a dramatic rise in children aged between 11 and 17 trying vapes, even though they're not supposed to be sold to under 18s. Health Secretary Steve Barclay says it's time to put a stop to it. I think we're concerned about the way that uh, vapes are being marketed to children, uh, the use of bubblegum flavours, presenting them like sweets. So we want to get the balance right. For those that smoke, vaping is better. But if you don't smoke, don't vape. Russia continued its attacks on Ukraine ports and grain infrastructure on Thursday. The Ukrainian air defence has claimed to have shot down 28 of 33 drones, but some did get through. As winter draws in and Ukraine has not as yet made any major breakthrough, there's a growing concern that the war will continue right through into 2024. With chaos in the US Congress, along with the outbreak of war between Israel and Hamas, Ukrainian President Zelensky was asked if he's concerned that Ukraine might find itself short in weapons and international aid. Of course everybody is afraid that if if there are some other tragedies worse in the world what partners especially United States what what they can give you everybody is afraid and I think also Russia count on it on dividing support so to come on the smart seven it's all kicking off at the palace and Wayne Rooney is back in blue right after this if you're listening to this podcast you must recognize the value of asking questions. 
At Aramco, our questions help us engineer a better future. How can today's resources fuel our shared tomorrow? How can we deliver energy to a world that can't stop? How can we deliver one of the fuels of the future? How can we sow curiosity to harvest ingenuity? To learn more about how innovation drives us forward, visit aramco.com slash powered by how. Welcome back. Wayne Rooney is back in blue, although it's not the blue of Everton, it's the blue of Birmingham City. After a week which saw him quit his job at DC United and Birmingham City fire their previous boss, John Eustace, Wayne hopped on a plane. He met the press for the first time as a championship manager on Thursday and he's looking forward to his new challenge. Since speaking to Birmingham and seeing the ambitions of the club, where they want to go, where they want to get to, um, excited me. And... I want to be successful. It's clear that the club want to be successful and um, it was a really easy decision. If you were to make a long list of the UK's politest people, I'm pretty sure that both Prince William and Greg James would be close at the top. So it's a little startling to have to report they're having a row. It all kicked off when Radio 1's drive time duo of Jordan North and Vic Hope met up with the Prince and Princess of Wales and asked about their favourite DJs. Prince William didn't hold back and Greg was pretty shell-shocked about it. I can definitely say with great purpose that Greg James is an average DJ and Jordan and Vic are the, the future. <laughs> I, I don't really know how to... They don't really ever have a go at anyone. Ash in Bristol, one of my favourite texts we've ever received. The only thing for it, Greg, is to egg his house. <laughs> I, I'd i bloody love to egg his house. He's been incredibly famous since he was 16. He was part of one of the biggest boy bands in the world and he's been to hell and back. No, it's not Harry Styles. He seems pretty well balanced, actually. It's the original Harry Styles. It's Robbie Williams. From his early days in Take That, through an incredible solo career that saw him play in front of millions, Robbie's done it all. And now he's telling his story in a new four-part series that drops on Netflix on November 8th. It's astounding what's happened in my life. The past has me in a headlock. Something has to give. You know, you're only supposed to do this at the pearly gates of St. Peter. This looking back at your life. You've been listening to The Smart 7. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 a.m. Hit that follow button and have a great day. Give us seven minutes, we'll give you the world. Dive into New Jersey's rich history and diverse heritage. From colonial reenactments and Victorian architecture, scientific breakthroughs to the Underground Railroad, we're the crossroads of the American Revolution, birthplace of the motion picture, and home to the oldest lighthouse in the U.S. Explore our historic museums, view maritime marvels, and travel insightful itineraries. Learn more at visitnj.org history.